the present video uh, is the part 2 of the earlier video on the PN junction semiconductor physics and uh, this will mainly discuss about the various uh, uh, junction capacitances. Uh, we observe that uh, uh, there are uh, basically two types of uh, junction capacitances. Uh, one junction capacitance is when the junction is reverse biased and that junction capacitance we call it a depletion region capacitance or junction capacitance and uh, there is another uh, kind of uh, capacitance when the uh, junction is forward biased. So we'll discuss both kinds of uh, capacitances in brief. So here uh, we'll start uh, with the uh, depletion layer capacitance. Sometimes we call it as a CT, the transition capacitance. And this capacitance uh, happens when the junction is reversed west. So this is a PN junction and uh, N is uh, put to positive uh, battery terminal and P to negative. Its uh, junction is reverse bias and this is a depletion region in the junction. So uh, in this uh, PN junction this region uh, is a acts like a dielectric since it is non-conductive it acts like a dielectric and that P and N regions they are basically doped semiconductors so they have a low resistance so they behave like a conductor so they could be considered as a plate of this capacitor so they act like a plate here now uh, this uh, uh, depletion layer capacitance has been given different name. We call it a depletion layer capacitance. We know it. Also known as depletion region capacitance. The other name is space charge capacitance. Another name is transition capacitance. And the simplest name is the junction capacitance. These are the various names to uh, the capacitor formed by the reverse biased PN junction. Now we know the relation for parallel plate capacitor that capacitance is called silent A over D. Here uh, if this is acting like a capacitor then D should be the uh, width of this depletion region and area is the area of cross section of this junction and epsilon is the dielectric constant of the medium here. So by knowing this you can determine uh, the value for the uh, diffusion or transition capacitance CT, the parallel plate capacitance. Uh, we know with that decrease uh, with uh, with increase uh, uh, with the D increases uh, with the increase in reverse bias. That means if uh, reverse bias is increased, the depletion region widens. State standard, so capacitance will decrease. So that relation is straightforward. Now the junction capacitance also depends on the uh, nature of the PN junction uh, and the uh, type of semiconductor material and the magnitude of the reverse bias. This is another relation relating the uh, these constants here. K is a constant which depends on the nature of the semiconductor which is being given here. Vb is the barrier potential that is about 0.7 volts for silicon, 0.3 for germanium, germanium. V is the applied reverse voltage. Here it is minus V so applied reverse voltage is negative so it will make it P. N is equal to half for abrupt junction and one third for linearly graded junction. So this relation you can calculate the value for the uh, junction capacitance. Uh, please note here uh, the value for K is given here relating to A epsilon Q and N A and D uh, of this uh, region. Now uh, when the junction is uh, reverse biased 
then what is the effective uh, voltage, uh, variable voltage, voltage being applied uh, to the junction? So this is VB is the barrier voltage minus, since it's a negative voltage, so VB minus minus V, so it will be VV plus V. So that means when you apply a voltage, a negative voltage here, the actual voltage would be applied would be the sum of these two voltages. Okay. Now uh, the other important uh, capacitance uh, comes in play, uh, that is uh, we call it a um, diffusion capacitance. It's also called the uh, storage uh, capacitance, and this capacitance occurs when the junction is forward biased. And uh, another thing to notice, the value for this capacitance is very large as compared to the capacitance of, uh, uh, of the reverse bias junction. Uh, you can see from the semiconductor physics uh, that uh, the uh, when the junction is forward biased, uh, what we observe is the electrons are injected uh, from the N region into the P region and the holes are injected from the P region into the N region. Hence, when they cross the junction, they become the minority carrier in that region and combined with the majority carriers present there and uh, they decay exponentially uh, with a distance from the junction. And uh, this leads to charge storage in the PN junction and uh, removal of uh, this stored charge takes some time and uh, this uh, removal of space charge which takes some time, it gives rise to a capacitance effect and which we call it a space uh, uh, diffusion capacitance. Anyway, this uh, we have summarized here. Uh, we said uh, when the junction is suddenly reversed by us, the current uh, becomes zero. Forward current reduces to zero. Large number of majority charge carriers are present and they recombine. And so charge in reverse bias must be removed and it takes finite time. And this finite time taken gives rise to the capacitive effect. Now, uh, if we see the quantity of stored charge uh, presents uh, uh, magnitude of diffusion current. Uh, now, uh, the value for uh, 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 this diffusion capacitance is typically of the 20 picofarads and said to be about 5,000 5, times uh, larger than the transition capacitance. So, this is the governing relation for finding the value for the uh, diffusion capacitance, tau i over eta vt, tau is the mean lifetime of the carriers and i is the forward current and eta is constant is 1 for germanium and 2 for silicon and vt is the volt equivalent of the temperature that is 26 uh, millivolts roughly. So what we observe here is here the CD, the diffusion capacitance is proportional to i. Uh, now uh, you can evaluate uh, from this uh, uh, equation the value for the diffusion capacitance. Now we will see uh, how the diffusion, uh, these uh, CT and CD, that uh, the transition capacitance and diffusion capacitance, how they vary uh, with the voltage. What we observe here when we apply a reverse bias, there is a transition capacitance and uh, when we are forward bias is a diffusion capacitance and we observe here uh, this capacitance uh, with reverse bias uh, uh, reduction reverse bias uh, uh, gives uh, increased uh, capacitance value but this capacitance is much smaller than the forward biased uh, uh, diffusion capacitance and uh, we know that there is a uh, device called a vector dot which is based on the uh, capacitance variation uh, uh, in the uh, in the uh, transition capacitance uh, in a diode and which is used for as a uh, diode for tuning uh, as an electronic tuning diode. Now uh, uh, one more important uh, point here is that uh, we know the uh, with the capacitance the reactive part is 1 over 2 pi fc. If the frequency is uh, low, 
normally the selective part is uh, it's quite high and uh, it's not significant at high frequencies but when the frequency increases uh, the significance of this part also increases and it becomes very significant uh, with the uh, with the frequency then the value of C is very important thank you